Hi, Sean Steen here for Steen Guitars and the Jam Brothers Music. Uh, today we're going to discuss purchasing an acoustic guitar. We're going to cover more of the higher end guitars starting around 700 and up where they're all solid wood uh, and what to ask for at a music store. Um, Construction is important and a lot of people don't ask about the two most important things, how the neck is mounted and what kind of finish is on the guitar because those things actually affect the sound of the instrument. So a good example is in Martin's line. If you go to a 16 series, this guitar is around $1,500. Now this has a gloss top and a satin back. The satin uh, finish actually helps lower the cost of the instrument. It has a rich light fingerboard instead of an ebony fingerboard. That helps lower the cost. But the main ingredient inside this guitar is it's got a simple dovetail, which uh, it's kind of a marketing term, but it's still a bolt-on neck. It fits like a dovetail, but it's actually still bolted on. Uh, that can lower the cost quite a bit construction-wise. Um, uh, before you're sending me emails and say a lot of high-end guitar companies still bolt the necks on, uh, yes, they do, but there is a sound quality difference, and you can hear them if you go from the 16 to the 18. You're going to hear a lot of sound difference. There's a depth to the sound of actually gluing the neck in, and it's cheaper and easier to do. So if every guitar company out there thought that the sound quality made no difference, they would bolt all their necks on. That's my argument for that. Um, if you go to the uh, 18 series, which is a step up, this is a standard series guitar. So this neck is glued in, and this is all gloss nitrocellulose lacquer and a real ebony fretboard. So the price goes up about $1,000 for that. Um, and there is a sound quality difference. Um, a huge sound quality difference? That's up to you. You should actually go in store and play them and see if it's worth it to you to pay the extra thousand dollars. Both are fantastic guitars, don't get me wrong, for the money. Um, whether it's worth it to you to spend the extra money is going to be up to you. Uh, finish is another important thing too. There's two kinds of finish basically. You have lacquer or polyurethane. Uh, you'll hear a lot of back and forth about that, that, that polyurethane, some, sometimes you can get it really thin and it won't really matter. Uh, polyurethane is generally thicker. Um, it's more protecting of the guitar, uh, more forgiving for stains and bumps and stuff because it's not as thin as nitrocellulose lacquer. Uh, but it is a plastic in a sense. So uh, nitrocellulose lacquer is super, super thin. It's porous, lets the air in so the wood can age, and does let the top vibrate more. And again, the argument goes to if polyurethane didn't make a sound difference to nitro, uh, everybody would use polyurethane, Martin being one of them, because it's way, way cheaper and way, way less labor-intensive putting a polyurethane finish on than it is a lacquer finish. It's hard to put lacquer on. This can take up to, you know, three weeks just to get the lacquer finish on, actually on there and having it drying in a, in a, a drying queue for ten days so it hardens. Uh, polyurethane, you spray it, and the next day you can ship it out. So, again, I'll argue that if it doesn't make a sound difference, then everybody would just do polyurethane. Lacquer sounds better. Lacquer is also repairable, too. If you get a scratch or something, it actually can be repaired. A good luthier can fix your guitar. You'll never know anything was wrong with it. Um, so there's a lot of advantages to having a lacquer finish. Uh, it is more temperature sensitive. I always recommend people buying nice high-end guitars like this to actually leave it in their case. And I know like people like to have them hanging on the wall. But they are more temperature and humidity sensitive because it does let the air and the weather actually into the wood, uh, which is a good thing for aging. Uh, but a bad thing for, you know, if you live in a, you know, you don't want to store this in your garage. <laughs> Leave it in a climate-controlled environment is probably the best thing for it. But, you know, if you're going to spend this kind of money, I hope you take care of it. Um, satin finish versus gloss, too. Uh, satin finish guitars is another thing people do to lower the cost. This is a Larave. Um, this is one of their more... Um, I wouldn't say budget lines, it's still an expensive guitar, but it's not as expensive as a gloss finish one. Um, satin is very, very thin. Um, uh, satin poly is always going to sound better than regular poly because it's thinner and it's not as thick, it lets the top vibrate. They have an airy kind of quality to the sound. Uh, you have to kind of hear it, you're not going to hear it on a, a video because, you know, never um, demo guitars on video. You can't really hear what's going on because there's, it depends on the microphone, how things are mixed, and it, it can be too altered. You're not hearing a guitar in person. I know people like go to blog sites and they try to listen to guitars and it's, it's really impossible to hear what a guitar really sounds like in a recording. You're never going to hear it. Um, but satin finish has its own tone. Some people like it 
some people say, well, it sounds open and airy, and other people say, it's no, it's too boxy sounding. So again, you're going to have to try guitars. Find your lo local guitar shop and go in and listen to them very carefully. Also, when you're going to shop for a guitar, um, if you have no other stores near you, you have to go to the chain store. I understand that. But if you have an independent store that carries, you know, high-end guitars like Larave and Martin, uh, Gibson, all those guitar companies that, that make really good quality instruments, Guild, uh, go to those shops first. And the reason why I say that is because um, those shops, when they purchase a guitar from those guitar manufacturers, they actually own them. They, they own them until you take them home. Uh, they have a personal interest in them, a lot of them taking care of them. They're not going to be as beat up. Uh, they actually set them up usually when they come into shop. A good shop will actually set it up for you while you're in the shop. If you're playing something, you go, the action's a little high for me. Can you take it down? There's a truss rod in here that they can adjust, and they can set it up for how you like it to play. Or if it's too low, they can raise it. Um, a good shop will do that on the spot for you. It's only a couple truss rod turns for them. They don't care, uh, and they know how to do it. Uh, so I always recommend trying to go to an independent store who does those kind of that kind of service. It's a little extended. Um, this stuff is price controlled. You're, you know, everyone looking for a deal. Um, there's not a lot of deals out there nowadays because all the manufacturers set a minimum advertised price online, and everybody just kind of holds that as the bar to what they're selling it for. And the margins are tight. So uh, occasionally you get somebody clearancing something out or something. Well, you see something online a little bit cheaper than it's supposed to be. Uh, they're not supposed to do that, but a lot of manufacturers will. Um, be weary of that because they could be a dog. It means it's been sitting in a store somewhere and nobody wanted it for some reason. So be careful of that as well. Uh, if, you're, if you're over $1,000 though, I'd say you have to play the guitar. You have to go to your local store, find a good one, people you can trust who know about guitars, and demo them. Listen, everyone's got different ears and what we hear is different, so some people like the sound of one thing to another. Um, you have to try them out. But ask about the neck joint. Um, like Larry is a good example. They have a dovetail neck joint, but they're lowering the cost on this by doing the satin finish. Some companies will do one or the other. Um, a good example is a very affordable guitar company, Siegel. Um, Siegel are known for value. These are handmade in Canada, and they're a very good economical value for a lot of people because you can get an all solid wood guitar like this for $6.99. That's a pretty good deal. Uh, solid top, back, and sides. Uh, how they lower the cost is they have a, they have a bolt-on neck, and it's a three-piece neck. You can actually see the three pieces glued here. Um, another thing, neck pieces. Uh, you know, high-end guitars like Larave and Martin use one-piece neck, and they carve them out. There are some companies that use multiple pieces of neck. That's not a bad thing. Glue is stronger than wood. Um, the only thing is, I would be leery of anyone. I don't know if you can see this. There's a line here where you can see where they glued the paddle on, and they did it above the nut. Uh, if you see a company that does it right on the nut, I know people are going to argue with me again, but for someone who has been a luthier and does, has done neck repairs, uh, this interferes with the transmission of vibrations when you put glue in there. So whenever time you get a headstock repair, people always kind of say, well, it doesn't really play the same. It's because it's changed how the dynamic of the string tension on the nut, you can hear that, that downward tension responds. Uh, it's very subtle. But a uh, real guitar player say, oh, my guitar never played the same once I broke the headstock and had it fixed. So I'd be leery of anyone that does it actually on the nut. You have above or below, that's usually where they're glued. Um, that's a better way to do it. But again, bolt-on necks and uh, polyurethane finishes are usually done to lower the cost. Um, if it's a high-end guitar and they're not lowering the cost, be very leery of that. That means they're just pocketing the money. Uh, and there are some companies that will do that. Don't assume just because a guitar is expensive that you're getting a lot for your money. Uh, ask what kind of neck is, it has and what kind of finish it has. Um, well, that's it for me, and uh, we'll see you soon.